In this lecture, we're going to speak about processing JSON. And JSON is a format that is used pretty widely, especially when we speak about passing data between the server and the client. So what is JSON? Well, JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. And what it is, it's a lightweight data interchange format. And this is, I'm taking this directly from JSON.org. And it is simple textual representation of data. It can't really get any simpler than this. And it's great for a couple of reasons. Number one is it's easy for humans to read and write JSON. And it's easy for machines to parse and generate JSON. So in a lot of sense, this is very similar to XML because it also was pretty easy to write for machines and for humans to read and write. But JSON notation is quite a bit simpler and shorter. And most importantly, it is, just like XML, completely independent of any language, any programming language. So what's the JSON syntax rules? Well, they're pretty simple. Number one is it's a subset of JavaScript objects literal syntax, but with a couple of exceptions. Number one is the property names must be included in double quotes, and the string values must be in double quotes as well. And that's it. There's really nothing else to it. The syntax for everything else is exactly like for object literal in JavaScript. Let's take a look at an example. So here I have an object literal, what looks like an object literal, but you could see that the property name is included, every single property name is inside double quotes. And any string values have double quotes around them as well. Not single quotes, but double quotes. All the other value, like false, like a number, are listed in the same way you would list them in an object literal. So this is the typical string that would really go over the wire from the server to the client. But even if you're in the browser and you're in your JavaScript program, you could certainly take the string and store it inside a variable. All you have to do is put single quotes around it. And the reason you put single quotes around it is because you already double quotes inside of that string. So this is no different than any other string that you would have in JavaScript. Which brings me to a common misconception about JSON. JSON is not a JavaScript object literal. JSON is just a string. The syntax of JSON is based on object literal, but it is not one and the same. If you wanted an object in JavaScript, you would have to take the JSON string and convert it to an object. And similarly, if you want JSON, you would have to take an object and convert it back into a JSON string. And JavaScript provides a couple of utilities for that. Number one is if you wanted to convert from a JSON string into an object, you use this json.parse function. And backwards, if you wanted to convert from an object to a JSON string, you use json.stringify method. And yet, since we're in computer science, we are allowed to make up completely arbitrary English words. Stringify. There you go. Let's jump into the code editor and redo our previous example with JSON coming from the server instead of just a regular string. Okay, so we're looking at name.json file and it is located in lecture 58 data folder. And we basically substituted the name.txt with this name.json. And this has what looks like a regular object literal, except we know it's just a string. It's a string that is sitting on the server and you know it's a JSON since you can see all the property names are in quotation marks and the strings are also in quotation marks and they're both double quotes. So this is the same string we actually saw in the slides. Let's go ahead and go close the file browser and go to our ajaxutils.js. And what we're going to do is we're going to enhance them a little bit. When we say send date get request, we're going to provide one more argument called is JSON response. So we want to pre-process our response in ajaxutils.js instead of having to process json.parse every time inside of our custom scripts. So let's go ahead and do it once. So what we're doing here is we're saying is JSON, you're as a client of this code, you could pass it a true or false or just omit it and it will automatically, if you omit it, it will automatically assume that you want JSON, but you could pass a false in here and that will work as well. And our onReady state change property, which is going to go ahead inside our anonymous function, our closure, we're going to pass this is JSON response into the handle response function. Let's go ahead and take a look at this handle response function because it got updated a little bit. So now we are passing is JSON response 
And after we figure out that it is time to handle our real response, we're going to first check whether or not we need to kind of default it to true. So if JSON is JSON response is actually equals undefined, then we want to set is JSON response to true. So if nobody passes us anything, we'll just default the response to be true. And then we check that if JSON response is true, then the response handler is going to be passed when we execute our response handler that the client of this code, in other words, also us, but a different script.js is passing to us here. The response handler function, what we're going to pass to the response handler function is actually going to be already a parsed response. It's going to response that text. We're going to parse it using JSON that parse. So what response handler function is going to get as its argument when it is going to get called is a JSON, is, is a parse JSON string, which at that point will be an object. It's going to get a JavaScript object. And in the else, if they want actually not to have JSON be handled in this response handler, then we're just going to get them the actual response text and they can handle it. Whoever is the caller of this can handle it however they want. Okay, so let's take a look at our script.js. Our script.js now has the same call as before, except this time what we're getting as part of our response handler is not any longer a request, it's actually the response JSON text that was converted into an object. So this res, res, response, is actually a JavaScript object. So we can now start building up our message. So here we're saying res.firstname plus res.lastname. So we're able to use it just like you would use any regular JavaScript object. And in fact, we remember that we had a property called likes Chinese food. If we take a look at name.json, likes Chinese food was equal to false. So we can actually use it inside of an if statement like a true or false value, likes Chinese food, and it will properly resolve to false in this case because that's what JSON name.json returned. And message will be said it does not like Chinese food. And the message will continue to be appended to and finally we could say number of displays and this is supposed to be a number a real number so if we wanted to say something else like plus one we can but right now let's not leave it alone and when we do this here we can finally say the final message and then we'll select our content which is our which is our div placeholder in the index.html page and we could go ahead and put that message in between the opening and closing H2 tags. So let's go ahead and do this. Let's save this. And let's go ahead and click Say Something. You can see it says, Jakob Heiken does not like Chinese food and uses two displays for coding. So we could change that. We could go to JSON, uh, name that JSON, and change that to true to see this in action. And we can even change this to say that displays is plus one. So we're using it as regular primitives uh, in both locations here, but we're using it through this res response object that json.parse built for us. So as we save all that and go back and say, say something, it says Yakov Akim now likes Chinese food, which is definitely closer to truth, and uses three displays for coding because we added to the two that was responded to by the JSON and was converted into a number. We added a one, so now it's three. So to summarize, JSON is a lightweight data representation. It's a great format for passing data from the server to the client, and a lot of times back as well from the client to the server if you wanted to give it some more descriptive data. The syntax of JSON is based on JavaScript object literal, but please remember, JSON is not a JavaScript object literal. It's just a string. JSON.parse will let you convert from JSON string to object, and JSON.stringify will let you convert from the object to the JSON string.